Us Brits, we're pretty resourceful when we have to be. Nowadays, you're never far from an indoor fridge full of man-made snow to ride on. But the snow domes, they're too young to be responsible for this generation's current success. Oh no, that's down entirely to the humble dry slope. They're dotted all over the UK, come in all shapes and sizes, and they might look a bit tired compared to their shiny new indoor cousins, but scratch beneath the surface and you will see that they are thriving. To prove it, I'm going on a road trip from south to north, visiting some of the UK's best and most unique dry slopes. Unfortunately for me, I've got a friend for company. It is, of course, Jamie Nichols. Jamie. How's it going? Good morning. Good morning. Do you still get a bit excited yeah, going to a new slope? Mass You've never excited. ridden here. No, I've never ridden here, so I'm yeah. quite excited. That jump looks fun down there. Let's try it out. Let's, Let's do it. How you feel there? My best people do like fresh air. On my best but looking like a real player. I can roll to the club in the wheelchair. Look at the I got Jamie's autograph when he was about 11. To Tim, keep up the snowboarding. Jamie. <laughs> Jack's pretty good. The first stop here at Snow Tracks Done and Dusted, you got to say, pretty rad setup. Yeah, it's really good. I really like how it's really like confined in a small space. But Intimate. There's lot, yeah, there's yeah. loads of stuff you can do, there's loads of rails. They've got a really good little setup. And it's worth noting, it's 9 a.m. on a Wednesday morning, and beginner lessons are happening over there. There's an 85 year old guy learning to ski. How amazing is that? He's doing well. But let's go. Let's yeah, on to the next lock one. and load and uh, warm well dry slope. Here we come. Hey guys. <laughs> I remember competing here when I was eight years old. I remember that so well. Good and yet yeah, it's still going. The jump's still, still going. here. Still, in still plenty time. of locals. Yeah. blown away by the locals, really. I mean, look at them, they're just sessioning this rail setup and absolutely loving it. Warm well. Woo! We'd had a lot of fun, but we couldn't hang around. Our final stop of the day in Gloucester was 124 miles and two and a half hours up the road. This was a chance to relive the good old days. I won my first ever competition here a few years back. Jamie wasn't even born. And it was our first encounter with Dendex, the infamous wrist-spraining, finger-snapping, dreaded diamonds of doom. My lessons were on Dendex, but I'm definitely feeling very nervous right now. It's like 200 metres of panicking the whole way down. It's kind of like going back in a time warp to the 80s when riding on this stuff. I don't know. But it's nice, it's got a romantic charm to it. This is the dry slope of old right here. Soaking wet, hanging out with your mates. You look at your leg. You've I got know. A dry slope leg. Isn't it ironic that it's called dry slope and yet you leave soaking wet? <laughs> and dirty. <laughs> How are you feeling oh, now? I'm feeling tired, man. It was good though, wasn't it? I feel like I've ridden three slopes which, in a day. Which we have. Which we have. <laughs> and tomorrow the same. It's yeah, going to be good. home slope tomorrow. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I've not been for ages. Be so, good. Yeah, really excited. How do you feel being back at Halifax? Every time I'm back home, I love coming up here. It's obviously where I started snowboarding, so it brings back a lot of memories for me. Well, they've rolled out the red carpet for us. They've opened early. They've opened, yes. And Andy Nudds is here. He's come yeah, to shred. he's come as well. It's going to be good. Come on, then. Yeah. We've not got long, have we? No, let's do it. I've got an hour, and then I have to go and meet the rest of the GB Park and Pipe crew in Scotland, so, yeah, we better get cracking. Too fast to Sometimes it all falls down. These chains never leave I keep dragging them. That's one more boy, and it's one more night. Why has this place produced, well, obviously two incredible 
European snowboarders, but also Katie Ormerod is a product yes. in this place. Isn't she it? started just after me. I can remember her being <laughs> so small. And now she's just like, obviously, you know, now she's amazing. The first woman to do a double cock 1080. And she's come from here and that's from all the practice riding on this dry slope. We used to actually ride, there's some trees back there, didn't we? We used to ride down the trees, we'd hit this wooden rail, we'd hit that wooden rail. But there's loads of stuff we'd just get stuff yeah, out. and move all the features yeah. around, put stuff on top of the quarter pipe or yes. up on the slope up there. And... Yeah, exactly. So, so just... you'd have to be a bit creative, yeah. Yeah. basically. That transfers then onto snow and that's what, you know, obviously where we've come to today. We'll see you in Scotland. Jamie's off to go meet up with Team GB and uh, I'm going to take Nudzi here down to Sheffield. Mm, my first time in Sheffield. You'll like it. <laughs> come on, they've got a half pipe. They've got an actual Dendex half pipe. Well, they had a half pipe. In 2012, Sheffield Ski Village was destroyed by fire. If the hills we had ridden on our trip so far were the present of UK dry slopes, then sadly Sheffield is very much the past. In its heyday, this was Europe's largest artificial ski resort, and it was a resort. So it's not just a straight slope with just one jump in it, it's got all sorts of different terrain. This was a, an amazing breeding ground for so many good skiers and snowboarders. James Woods, obviously. It's pretty mad to think this only burnt down just over four years ago. It's really gone to ruin. There was nothing left to ride for Nudzi and I. I, wish I could at the of but in 2015, the Salt Street crew proved that where there's a will, there's a way. There are whispers of Sheffield Ski Village being rebuilt, and I'm not the only one who hopes they are true. For now, though, it was time to hit the road again. I left Nudzi in Yorkshire and headed north to Scotland with an impromptu stop off along the way. As we were barreling up the M6, we had a quick look on the map and noticed that no more than 15 minutes off the motorway is this little hidden gem, Kendall Dry Slope. <laughs> oh, look at it. Now answer me this, why is it green? It's green because we're just on the edge of the National Park, the Lake District National Park. Um, so where we're based, having a white slope wouldn't have been fitting with the local surroundings. Ah, right, OK. Yeah. How important is it, do you think, to have dry slopes like this? It's really important because for that, that weekly, that day-to-day -day practice, you know, this is the scene for these guys. Some of these guys have never been on snow. Some of them might never actually go on snow, um, but they can still take part. It's a great facility and it's a great scene in the UK. You talk about a great facility, it looks great. The sprinklers have just come on. I'm gonna go and have a quick slide. Go and do it. Is that all right? Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. Kendall, done and dusted. Very stoked we stopped off here. What a little treat that was. As the sun set on day two of our tour, it was quickly back onto the M6 with the small matter of 150 miles to drive to Glasgow and our final stop. We've met back up with Jamie and also that boy right there, Matt McCormick. He's a local legend around these parts. And apparently he's pretty good. Pretty intimidating first go. Not gonna lie, it's a big old jump up here in Bearsdale. It seems like all the slopes we've been to, it's a similar deal, it's a similar scene. There's kids just constantly sessioning and riding and which is a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing that those dry slopes still have scenes, because nowadays with their snow domes opening, people venture off into those places. Looking forward then, Team GB from Sochi Olympics, all dry slope riders. That's going to change at some point. It will be that some snow domes, some, fridge, some actual fridge kids will be born through oh, the yeah, system. Oh yeah, obviously. Yeah, they're, they, they're coming up now. Like, snow domes are still really new, and there's loads of young kids coming up through there. I think it'll always need to be like a collaboration between the two. There's one kid actually from Bray Head right now, Leon. He they started off in the fridge, mostly rides there, but he's just started coming here. He's like progressed so fast for jumps. Well, we've enjoyed it. We've had a good yeah. hot lap of the UK, haven't we? We're watching little Leon here as well, and you know, from what you've said, and obviously yourselves, it's the future of British snowboarding is pretty bright, isn't it? Mm, definitely, 100%. Yeah.
All right, well, listen, you haven't earned your bowl of chips yet, so should we have a few more? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Come on, man. Let's go have a few, a few more, more runs. Let's go to get it, man!